once again just to say thanks much for all of you participating. Um, this really is the, the concentration of, you know, if you're to sample all the ET, people doing ET mapping across the United States, uh, you know, we are concentrated here today, I think, probably 80%. So this, this is a very uh, uh, substantial uh, uh, workshop, and that's one reason why we want to make a few statements, take advantage of that, knowing how beneficial it is. Before we get going, I, I want to take just a minute to make a couple of announcements. One is uh, Aisha Kalich, who's from Nebraska, she had to uh, head to the airport, but uh, she mentioned something I, I just want to reiterate. Uh, the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, is in the process of creating a subcommittee. It's called a task committee, which has about a two or three year life to uh, help study and organize remotely sensed evapotranspiration. So the very stuff we're talking about. Um, and I, I want to acknowledge Tom Lay from the state of Colorado is here. Raise your hand, Tom. Tom is currently the chair of, of, of the evapotranspiration committee of ASCE, uh, which is a long standing committee. Uh, it's been together for years and years. Uh, they're responsible for creating Manual 70, if you're familiar with it, and the the standardized Pimamon teeth we're talking about was a product of, of Tom's committee. Um, anyway, that committee is, is in the process of sponsoring, as soon as the paperwork uh, gets initiated, to organize this task committee on remote sensing with ET. The purpose is going to be just to, uh, a little bit like the study that uh, Utah State's doing for the geological survey, but you know, just within the confines of uh, a national society kick the tires on the various techniques, uh, review uh, the uses, review the needs as far as types of satellites and imagery that are needed, uh, look at the applications, uh, maybe explore opportunities. And, and then uh, also another uh, uh, very important aspect is to more or less validate or substantiate the use of remotely sensed ET in uh, water management and uh, civil engineering types of processes, environmental. It's always nice to have an endorsement, I guess is probably the best word to use, from uh, you know, a national or international society. So anyway, I, I mention this because I want to invite any of you that might have interest, uh, contact me. I can put you in contact with Aisha. Aisha has been invited to uh, chair that committee. Uh, so we can put you in contact with her and uh, you know, there'll be meetings over the course of two or three years and uh, probably some kind of report done and maybe some analyses, comparative analyses or something. So um, it's, it's, it's very open to, uh, you don't have to be a member of ASE to uh, be a member of that committee. I'll be happy to talk more about that with anybody afterwards. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Jim Irons is still here and I've got Tony Willardson here. Um, I just want to make some acknowledgments and thanks. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the fact that the thermal imager will be on Landsat 8 that's going to be launched just a few months from now, February 2013. That thermal imager would not have happened without some strategic people. And I, I first want to acknowledge Tony Wilderson and, and just to say thanks to Tony, the executive director of the Western States Water Council, that. He actually believed Tony Morris and I when we told him that this stuff worked. And that was five, six years ago. And you know, we, we were just starting to develop this stuff and we were making applications in Idaho and just a few other areas, but we showed up at some Western States Water Council meetings and said, look, we need help. We gotta have thermal imaging on the next Landsat and we're just, nobody's listening to us. We, we need some some clout and uh, Western States Water Council is our best hope. And Tony listened to us and, and really did believe us that what we were saying really would work and it really was something that could be adopted. And I think th this workshop's testimony to that, that five years later, we're looking at applications in uh, you know, uh, more, more places and states than you can count on both hands, so. I wish my stock picks did as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, they'll come. We still got Tony and me. Just don't don't sell us. Um, 
And then I, I want to, Tom Loveland had to fly out already, but I want to acknowledge Tom Loveland, who's with the U.S. Geological Survey. He's the uh, uh, science leader for the Landsat program. And then uh, his counterpart, Jim Irons. Jim, raise your hand, but I think everybody knows who you are. Uh, Jim Irons is the counterpart at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, and Jim's the lead scientist on uh, Landsat 7 and the LDCM, but now you, you're you have a different title, which is? Well, I'm still the LDCM driver, Okay. 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 And, and the same story that Tony and I visited Jim Irons' office at NASA Goddard in, what, 2003, maybe? Three. Or four. Uh, just because Jim heard about the fact that these guys out in Idaho were, you know, trying to develop ET images from Landsat. And, uh, you know, NASA is always interested in ap applications, so he invited us to uh, brief him on it. And uh, from day one, Jim was extremely uh, open and receptive to this use, and he, he saw it as a real serious use. It wasn't just an academic exercise or a ploy to get funding from the federal government. It was uh, a real thing. And, and I don't know, and I probably don't want to ask all the inner workings that went on at NASA to get tears on LDCM, but uh, Jim was privy to some of those things and very instrumental. So anyway, Jim, on behalf of this community of ET people, we uh, extend our thanks uh, to you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, there were some in NASA, I think it would have been easy for them to say, look, uh, this decision just got made too late. We don't have time. But uh, uh, NASA How many Goddard. Times did we hear that? Yeah, we heard it. Yeah, NASA did Goddard. Did we delay the launch? <laughs> they, they rose to the challenge and uh, said, we'll, we'll do our best to get it done. But what was scary is just even a year ago at one of the science team meetings, they were reviewing the current state of uh, Landsat 8, the build, and how everything was being assembled. And they said, that, that thing is going to launch in early 2013, and it's not waiting on the tiers. And if the tiers isn't ready, you know, through all the testing and stuff, they said, we have a mock-up of the tiers imager that's the same shape and weight, but there's nothing in it. And it will go on that rocket, because they have to keep the same mass, because that whole rocket launch is designed around, in the satellite, designed around a certain mass. So they had this dummy tier sitting there, and they said, we will bolt that thing on if the real tiers isn't ready. And that just, gosh, that made my heart. <laughs> so anyway, we were, we were going to pay Goddard a visit if uh, we thought that that was going to happen. OK. Well, let's move into this final session. Um, we, and again, thanks everybody for uh, spending the time with us. I probably, maybe one reason you're still here is, is we do have the half day uh, workshop tomorrow morning. I think a number of you will be attending, which is fantastic. Uh, maybe Dave, well, we'll wait till after the session. We'll give you instructions how to get there. It will not be here. It will be at the Idaho Water Center, which is pretty close to the Stone House where we were last night. It's just on the big Broadway Avenue intersection with uh, Front Street, six-story, nice-looking building. It's got University of Idaho across the top. Also has CH Twin Hill. Has University of Idaho across the <laughs> top. No, it's got CH Twin Hill on it too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Idaho Department of Water Resources has the top two floors, and we'll be on the top floor, sixth floor. So you can just go in, number of entryways, take the elevator up, and. We'll be in the conference rooms. You can just ask where that is. Maybe we'll have some signs up there. And I think we're starting at 8 o'clock. Is that right? Yeah, 8 o'clock. So, Okay. Any, any questions or comments before we get into this session? Okay. Well, th this is the wrap-up session titled Where Do We Go From Here? 
Um, we've already had a little bit of a review uh, before lunch, I guess it was, on uh, forming a, a kind of a summary of, of what this workshop has covered and, and some of the findings and conclusions. Uh, this session, uh, now we want to just continue that. Uh, so we've got uh, four panelists, uh, Tony Morse, John Tracy with the director, John, at the end of the Idaho Water Resources Research Institute. That's kind of a, a university level uh, uh, research institute related to water that's uh, statewide representing Idaho, has a very close relationship with the uh, U.S. Geological Survey. Um, it's just one of 50 some representing the different states. Uh, Tony Willardson, you've met already, Executive Director of the Western States Water Council. Uh, Forrest Milton, uh, Forrest is a research scientist with the NASA Ames Research Center and also with Cal State uh, Monterey Bay. He's uh, done a lot of work. Justin uh, introduced some of the work, uh, collaborative work between uh, Nevada and, and uh, uh, Forrest uh, Group. And then Tony Morse, who you've uh, heard from already. and. Uh, Tony's manage, managing partner, it says, of the spatial analysis group. That's nice. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to these guys. Hopefully, um, we'll have plenty of time at the end to uh, formulate things. Tony's got a uh, uh, kind of a template for an email that uh, we're going to uh, run past all of you as kind of a summary of uh, what we would like to see from the next Landsat. Um, future landsats. So with that, um, I'll just let you guys decide who wants to go first.